since the end of the last ice age. Our ancestors have survived this freezing desolation for 25,000 years. They are hunter-gatherers. They travel light, their children with them, one meal away from starvation. They are never able to settle down. But these nomads are about to change the world. Their Stone Age revolution will make our civilization possible. They will set humanity on the long journey to the modern world. Around 15,000 years ago, the climate began to change. The glaciers melted, and with water, the world came back to life. One of the best places for humans to live now was an area of the Middle East we call the Fertile Crescent, from Israel to Iraq. The hills were dotted with trees, which spread quickly as the weather improved. The open woodlands were like a garden, supporting a new range of edible plants. Animals flourished on the uplands and fertile plains. It was a hunter-gatherer's paradise. It was here the travelling bands found something completely new, which would change humanity forever. They discovered a huge family of plants, the grasses. It was a vast supply of grain. This was the spark which would make human progress possible. The evidence is scattered in valleys across the Fertile Crescent. These people left no recorded language or stories. All the archaeologists can do is dig. In the 1920s, the first great woman archaeologist, Dorothy Garrod, carried out excavations around Mount Carmel in Israel. She was looking in caves she thought had been used 50,000 years earlier. Instead, she unearthed the body of a man buried around 12,000 years ago. He was curled up wearing a beautifully crafted headband decorated with pipe-like seashell. It was so distinctive, Garrett believed she had discovered a new people. She named them the Natufians. As she kept digging, she found something researchers had never seen before. It was a tool with a bone handle. It held a line of sharp flint blades. They were coated with a shiny residue, traces of a wild grass, an ancient form of wheat. It was a sickle, a tool designed especially for cutting grass. So Dorothy Garrett knew the Natufians were collecting the new grass foods in large quantities. At the same time each year, these ancient people would have found the ripening grass in huge areas. Many of them were not edible, 
but they managed to select all the useful species. Now they had barley and wheat. But they were travellers, working together in small family groups. They had to carry everything they harvested. This burden would ultimately change their way of life. Today, the land of the Natufians is drier and hotter. The past is waiting to be discovered just beneath a forbidding surface. Here, at Wadi Hama, in northern Jordan, the Natufians left minute traces of their lives. Archaeologist Philip Edwards has found evidence that these nomads had everything they needed in one place. They're well placed here. They're on water and they are positioned uh, between the lowlands of the Jordan Valley and the uplands of the Mediterranean hills behind. In fact, the Jordan Valley, when, when the Tufian people were here, was filled by a lake, Lake Lausanne, which uh, extended right up and right past the scene here. And looking over that, we, we would see, if it was a clearer day, Mount Carmel peeping out on the coast, the site where the Natufian was discovered originally by Dorothy Garrod. Archaeologists estimate there were no more than a thousand families living in the whole of Israel and Jordan at the time. There was enough grain to feed them well. And it was all growing wild. Now archaeologists have experimented in harvesting wild cereals in their natural area in the Middle East. And what they found is that one person harvesting for a period of about three weeks can produce enough food to feed a family of four for a whole year. These ancient grasses are the forerunners of modern crops. The grains discovered by the Natufians still feed more than half the world's population today. Of all the things they ate, grain was unique in one vital way. It did not decay. Keep it dry, and it lasts for decades. For the first time, they had food they could rely on for long periods of time. Now, they needed to store their grain. There was a reason to stay in one place. This was the first time in the Middle East we know people built shelters to last from year to year. And they remained here from generation to generation down the centuries.